Today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the beginning parts of the scientific method in a little bit more detail. We're going to talk about observations, inferences, and also hypothesis writing. So an observation, using your five senses when you study to, de some, to describe something, just the facts, meaning just things you can tell with your sense of sight, sense of touch, sense of smell, taste, or your sense of hearing. You're not making any guesses, you're not giving any opinions, it's only facts from your senses. So Homer Simpson over there is taking a look at this barrel. He's saying the liquid is green and it is leaking from a brown can and he can also smell it. Those are all observations. So if you came across this scene in the classroom, you need to make some observations about what's going on here. Now, since you're not actually in the room, you're just going to be using your sense of sight. Moving on to inferences, you start with those observations that you made, and then you make some guesses about the object or situation. You're making some predictions. It can be a scientific opinion. It's based on the facts from your observations, but then you're going a little bit further in your mind. So Homer's saying that based on his observations, he thinks that the can is old and it's leaking a toxic substance. Does he know if he's right? No, that's okay. It's an inference. It's your prediction. But you're basing it on what you see, smear, see, hear, smell, taste, or touch. So this scene again makes some inferences about what's going on in this scene and why it's happening. Now, after you've made observations, that could lead you to some inferences, to some problem questions to explore, and then you would do some of your research or information gathering to get information about your topic. Once you have that background information, you're ready to make a hypothesis. And your hypothesis, before the experiment, what you think the result of the experiment will be. Now, when it comes to a hypothesis, you are writing what you think will happen, so it's your opinion there. There's a correct form to write a hypothesis, and it's written as an if-then statement. Okay, a statement means you're going to put a period at the end. So you're going to explain if, and then a little bit about what you're going to do in your experiment, comma, then, and then you explain what you think will happen. So for an example, if the amount of fast food eaten is increased, then the amount of weight gained will increase. So using the example with these sleds, which is written in the correct form. If you were given a question, your problem question, could you take that and write a hypothesis, which would be your next step in the scientific method? How does the mass of a car affect how fast it rolls down a ramp? After if, you'd write your independent variable, like what the person doing the experiment or what you would change to test that question. And then after the word then, you'd end up writing what's your dependent variable, the second part of your sentence, would be what you would measure, what you think would end up being your resulting measurement. So take a moment and write a hypothesis. So you can write a few more hypotheses to, just to do some practice, practice. If I do this, then this will happen. Who has faster reaction times, boys or girls? Start with the word if. What would you do to test reaction times in boys and girls? And then what do you think the result will be? Who do you think would have the faster reaction times? Does the color of the light bulb used affect the growth rate of grass seeds sprouted indoors? And which doorknob or handle in school has the most germs? And remember, a hypothesis is a statement, if-then statement. You'll show your learning in an assessment at the end of today's lesson. Feel free to go back to this video about observation, inference, and writing hypotheses.